Games have objects. Often games have a lot of objects, and of different types too. One of the biggest challenges with game programming is knowing how to manage those objects in your code. Let's say I have a player, some enemies, and some coins. They're all different types. So how would I process all of them in my game's loop? The player is easy because there's only one of them, so I could just call its functions and update and draw. But what about the enemies and power-ups? One very naive way to do this is simply use separate for loops for each object type. But imagine if you have a hundred object types in your game. You would need a separate for loop for all of them. Not only is this hard on your processor, but how would you deal with depth sorting and collision detection? Thankfully, Lua is a flexible language, so as long as all objects have a function named update and render, we can actually include all of them in a single table and for loop through that only once. But there's one other problem. Do you notice how they all have XY, DX, DY, and texture properties? I had to retype all of this for each one. This is an incredible waste of time. Wouldn't it be better if we could just have like a base class and that contains all of that and everything in our game can use those properties? But you may be thinking, you can't do inheritance in Lua. It's not like C Sharp or Jaffa. Well, actually, you can, and it's very easy. Back here in my code, I've gone ahead and added this entity class that's just empty as a new updated render, just like all my other game objects. I've also gone ahead and required it here in main, and it's very important that this comes before player enemy and power up, because these three things are going to depend on entity soon. Now, back here in my constructor, I'm going to paste some values I have. So, these are all the things I want for all of my game objects. So, I have a position, a velocity, a texture, and a speed. And I'm also going to paste in a default update function. So, I'm just going to update the position based on the velocity. And if the object doesn't have its own update function, it's just going to use the base entities. For the render, I'm also going to have a default. So at first it will check if there's actually a texture, because by default texture is nil. And if there is, it just draws it. So the other objects are not going to need a render function. So now let's go back to our player class. And here in our player, you notice how that it's being set to an empty table? Well, now it's going to be set to entity new. So we're going to actually set it to the entities constructor. And it's okay that there are no parameters. And instead of instantiating a, a whole table here, I'm actually going to do entity new and pass in the x and the y. And you notice how that you pass in an x and a y value to player, and then that in turn passes it into the entity constructor. And then that returns this, so that's going to return itself into the player's this. But we're also setting, this is very important, we're setting a meta table here, so this is self. And the reason why we need that is because the player has its own update that's different from the entity's update. So to override that, you know, like we need to say this and self, so like um, if the player calls its own update function, it's going to, you know, ask itself, what is self in this case? Well, it's the player's update. It's a little confusing. I did not make the Lua language, but that's how it works. But we don't need this render function here, so I'm just going to delete that. There. And uh, you notice how much lighter my code is already. So, let's run that and see if it works. Oh, wait, sorry, there's one more thing I gotta do. I actually have to set the player's texture again, because I had it before. Otherwise, we're gonna see nothing here, so I'm gonna set it to player texture, which is this value that I have up here. Okay, so now let's run that. And there we have it, it works exactly the way it did before. But I'm using the player's update.
There's one thing I want to address here. You see how the player is updating its position based on the velocity? But do you remember how we do the same thing in the entities update? I don't want to write the same lines of code again, so what I can do here is actually I can get rid of this and, you know, what if we could just use the entities update as well? Well, we actually can. So if I do entity.update and then I pass in self, which is the player, and then delta time. But you notice how I'm using dot update instead of colon update. Because when you do colon update, it passes in self. But we want to we wanna pass in the player's self, not the entity's self. So that's why we're doing it this way. So if I save that, it should work exactly as it did before. And good. We can now use the entities update as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the enemies and the power-ups. Okay, there. Yeah, it's very important that this is just empty. You might think it's strange that I'm passing a con in a constructor here with no parameters, but if you actually look at the, the Lua standard, uh, the, the Lua documentation, it actually recommends that you do this. Once again, I did not make the language, and then you pass in the parameters over here. But look how much lighter my code is now. And now my constructors are lighter and, you know, the power-up class is almost empty right now at this point because we don't need an update and a render function for that anymore. So let's run that and make sure that everything works. And yeah, it works exactly as it did before. What I want to do now is create a new enemy type because we just have one so far and I want to make it a different texture so I have this one right here enemy black one dot png I'm going to create a new file and I'll just call that super super enemy dot lua and before I forget I'll require it here so under enemy I guess I'll do require super enemy uh, to save a bit of time, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the enemy class, and I'm going to use Visual Studio Code's change all occurrences, and I'll call that Super Enemy. Now we can just go ahead and delete this function right here because we don't need that anymore. So the Super Enemy texture is just going to be Enemy Black. 1.png okay I think everything else should remain the same so it's being set to the super enemy texture and note because we already have timer in this class we don't need to set timer here actually we don't need to set any of the other properties so we can just do that and then we have a new enemy type but there's just one thing you notice how I'm still inheriting from entity here you know, what I actually want to do is inherit from enemy. So I'm going to change this to enemy. And why am I doing that? Well, I'm thinking of this enemy class as an enemy base class. Like, let's say there are functions I want all the enemies in my game to have. Like, for example, function look for player or function shoot. Oh, sorry, that should be enemy, enemy look for player, and enemy shoot. So now that I've defined those functions, and the super enemy is inheriting from the base enemy class, oh, I gotta change it here too. 
So now super enemy is inheriting from the base enemy class. So now it actually has access to the look for player and shoot function. So it can use that too if it wants to. And you can, just like before, we can override the update. But I'm just going to leave the update as the same for now. So here are my main file. I'm going to spawn a new super enemy. So I'll just copy and paste this line right here. And instead of enemy, I'll have super enemy. And I'll set his position to 550 by 550. Okay, save. Let's see what happens. And there we go. We got a new enemy type. The only thing that's different about this enemy, of course, is just the graphic. You know, in cases like this, in all honesty, I would not use inheritance. I mean, I think that inheritance is useful for most of your games. You probably heard of something related to this called the entity component system. And in an entity component system, all of your game objects are basically going to be the same, but they'll have a list of components. So instead of having the, the player with its own update function, it's going to have like a player movement component, and it's going to update that player movement component instead. But in all honesty, unless you're writing like a AAA game or something complicated like that, you know, just simple inheritance is enough. But you don't want to overdo it either. Like in our case, you know, all super enemies doing is just overriding the texture. You know, one thing you could do that's actually better in this case is you could just, instead of passing in X, Y, you would pass in like a parameters list. And well, parameters list and an X and a Y, and you would make like a bunch of enemy definitions. So you would have enemies database, and you would have like a table of entity definitions. So you'd have like a super enemy, and then that has like the texture, you know, whatever, and then the speed would be another value speed. And then you'd have regular enemy, so regular enemy, and then that would also have its own values. But I'm not going to do that right now. But then what you would do is you would pass this table into the parameters list, and instead of setting it like this, you would do params dot texture. That's actually a much more flexible way to handle enemies when only like the parameters of the enemy are different but if you need something with a completely different set of behavior inheritance is the way to go so i think what you learned here today will be useful for a lot of your games if you found this video useful like and subscribe let me know what you think in the comments ciao